New York State Racing Paramutual Wagering and Breeding Law Section 102 provides that the New York State Gaming Commission shall consist of seven members appointed by the governor by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Four members confirmed by the New York State Senate are necessary to afford the commission an ability to establish a quorum and undertake action. This present meeting of the Gaming Commission is now hereby called to order. This meeting is being conducted in conformity with Governor Andrew M. Cuomo Executive Order 202.1, which is entitled Continuing Temporary Suspension and Modification of Laws Relating to the Disaster Emergency. The order suspended portions of the open meetings law and specifically allowed the conduct of meetings by telephone or other similar device. The governor's executive order in relevant part reads, Article 7 of the Public Officers Law, to the extent necessary to permit any public body to meet and take such actions authorized by the law without permitting in public, in person, access to meetings and authorizing such meetings to be held remotely by conference call or similar service, provided that the public has an ability to view or listen to such proceedings and that such meetings are recorded and later transcribed. By Executive Order 202.95, Governor Cuomo ex extended the authority of Order 202.1 through March 21st, 2021. Accordingly, this commission meeting is being conducted in conformance with such allowance, and we are recording today's meeting for transcription as required. Ms. Secretary, will you please call the roll? John Friday. Here. Peter Machete. Here. John Paclemba. Here. Barry Sample. Here. Barry Chernick. Here. The Secretary, please have the record reflect that a, qual a quorum of qualified members is present, thus enabling the transaction of business. Chairman? The minutes of the Commission meeting conducted on January 26, 2021, have been provided to the members in advance. At this time, I'd like to ask if member, members corrections or amendments. Hearing none, Ms. Secretary, please let the record reflect the minutes were accepted. Rulemaking. New York State Paramutual and Wagering and Breathing Law Section 104.19 authorizes the Commission to promulgate rules and regulations that it deems necessary to carry out its responsibilities. In that regard, the Commission will from time to time promulgate rules and rule amendments pursuant to the State Administrative Procedure Act. Today we have two rules for adoption and one proposal for consideration. Rob, would you please outline the first item? For Commission consideration is adoption of a rulemaking to explicitly enable qualified authorized organizations lawfully conducting charitable gambling to accept payment by, for a chance by personal check, credit card, or debit card. This change will allow organizations seeking to implement contactless payment to readily do so. A notice of proposed rulemaking was published in the December 16, 2020 State Register, meaning the public comment period expired on February 16th. No public comments were received. Staff recommends that the Commission adopt this rulemaking. Commissioners, are there any questions on the adoption of a rule to authorize contactless payment methods for chances in charitable gaming? Hearing no questions, may I have a motion to adopt the rule? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. For commission consideration is adoption of a rulemaking eliminating the requirement in charitable gaming that a person participating in the management or operation of games of chance be a bona fide member of the authorized organization or auxiliary organization for at least one year prior to the organization's license period. This proposal will harmonize the participation requirement in games of chance with that required for general participation in bingo and will allow for greater participation in such games. A notice of proposed rulemaking was published in the December 16th, 2020 State Register, meaning the public comment period expired on February 16th, 2021. 
No public comments were received. Commissioners, are there any questions on the adoption of a rule to increase participation in the management and operation of charitable games of chance? Hearing none, may I please have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item for commission consideration is a proposed rulemaking to allow for an increase in the frequency of drawings in the Powerball game. The Multi-State Lottery Association, which administers the Powerball game, has concluded that more frequent drawings could attract more customers and has adopted a change in association rules to be effective for the August 23rd, 2021 drawing to conduct drawings three times a week instead of two. If New York does not accept the change, it would no longer participate in the Powerball game. Commissioners, any questions on the proposal of a rule regarding the frequency of Powerball drawings? Hearing no questions, may I have a motion on the proposed rule? So moved. Second. Any discussion Second. of the motion? Any discussion? Hearing none, may I have a vote, please? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is adjudication. Today we have five matters for adjudication. Rob? The first matter <clears throat> in the matter of Neil's Backyard, Inc., doing business as the Clifton. On September 2nd, 2020, the Bureau of Licensing issued a notice of license revocation and ordered the immediate temporary suspension of the lottery sales agent license of Neil's Backyard, Inc., which is doing business as the Clifton on Maple Avenue in Patchogue. The notice informed Neil's that the suspension was for conduct prejudicial to public confidence in the state lottery and because the licensee's character and general fitness were such that the licensee's participation as a lottery sales agent was inconsistent with the public interest. The notice of hearing alleged that Neil's Backyard Inc. engaged in conduct that promoted both violence and illegal gambling in connection with a pool at the location alleged to have been, uh, or at, at a pool alleged to have been operating at the Clifton. Neil's requested a hearing, which was conducted on October 22, 2020. The hearing officer submitted a report to the commission secretary on November 23rd, 2020, recommending that the license be revoked. Post report issuance, Neil submitted objections by email asserting that the pool results were determined by a police reported discharge of firearms and did not relate to people being shot. They also alleged that the commission counsel's office failed to prove that the pool constituted illegal gambling. On January 13th, 2021, Commission Counsel's Office withdrew the allegation of promoting illegal gambling, which caused the case to be remanded to the hearing officer for consideration in light of such withdrawal. The hearing officer has submitted an updated report, again recommending that the license be revoked. The Commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial Proceedings Exemption of New York Public Officers Law, Section 108.1. The Commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a 5-0 to zero vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendation. Next item. In the matter of Michael Garafala, the presiding judge at Yonkers Raceway suspended operating engineer Michael Garofalo for 30 days and fined him $1,000 for a prohibited act in violation of Rule 4119.9A. Specifically, Mr. Garofalo was accused of improperly making a Harrow adjustment on August 24, 2020, which was judged to be an act detrimental to the best interests of racing. Mr. Garofalo requested a hearing, which was conducted on January 13th. The hearing officer submitted a report to the commission secretary dated February 9th, recommending a suspension of 10 days and no fine, or in the alternative, a fine of $1,500 and no suspension. 
The commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of New York Public Officers Law Section 108.1. The commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a 5-0 vote to reject the hearing officer's report and find that Mr. Garofalo did not violate Rule 4119.9a. Next item. Next item, the presiding judge at Monticello Raceway suspended harness driver Miguel Alejo Hernandez for eight days for causing interference while driving the horse Roland and Rock and Roll, I'm sorry, Roland and Rock in the sixth race on December 2nd, 2020 in violation of rules 4117.4E and 4117.4M. Mr. Hernandez requested a hearing, which was conducted on January 8, 2021. The hearing officer submitted a report to the commission secretary dated February 9th, recommending a suspension of eight days. The commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial exemption of New York Public Officers Law, section 108.1. The commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a 5-0 vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendation. Next matter. The, presi the presiding judge at Monticello Raceway fined driver Gregory Merton $300 for excessive whipping while driving the horse weekend with Big D in the sixth race on December 30th, 2020 in violation of commission rule 4117.8C. Mr. Merton requested a hearing which was conducted on January 14, 2021. The hearing officer submitted a report to the commission secretary dated February 15th, 2021, recommending a $300 fine. The commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of New York Public Officers Law, section 108.1. The commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a 5-0 vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendation. Next matter, please. The final adjudication for today is in the matter of Romani, Inc. On October 16th, 2020, the Bureau of Licensing issued a notice of license suspension and ordered the immediate temporary suspension of the lottery sales agent license of Romani Mobile, which is located in Kingston. The notice informed Romani Mobile that the suspension was due to a failure to remit funds due. Romani Mobile requested a hearing, which was conducted on January 21st, 2021. The hearing officer submitted a report to the commission secretary recommending that the license be revoked. The commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of New York Public Officers Law, section 108.1. The commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a 5-0 vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendation. Next item on our agenda is new and old business. Is there any old business anyone would like to raise? Hearing none, any new business anyone would like to raise? Hearing none, we'll go to the next item. We're pretty close to a, the end of our meeting, which is adjourned. And we have a few issues we'd like to talk about. That um, One, this is Problem Gambling Week. The Kent Problem Gambling Month, I'm sorry, I'm cutting it short. I'm taking it this month and putting it down to seven days. I want to remind everyone that March is National Problem Gambling Awareness Month. The commission, in conjunction with our partners in the Responsible Play Partnership, has, debuted, has created a new public service campaign designed to promote responsible play as a practical safeguard against disordered gambling. Among other things, we have raised visibility during the televised New York lottery drawings on lottery retail displays, terminals, and our website. We also have been running new television and radio public service announcements seeking to raise responsible gambling awareness. The next item that I'd like to raise before we adjourn is a sad note. We've had a, another death in the Gaming Commission family and a death that is COVID related. 
I would like to note Seneca Gaming Authority Chairman Michael John passed away on March 8, 2021, due to complications from COVID-19. The Commission and our predecessor, the Racing and Wagering Board, had a long relationship with Mr. John, as he served on the Seneca Nation's Compact Negotiating Team and later served as a Seneca Gaming Authority Commissioner and member of the Seneca Gaming Corporation Board of Directors before returning to the SGA as chairman. His leadership and strong personality will be missed. I don't know if it's appropriate or not, and if it's not, we're going to do it anyway. Can we just have a moment of silence, please? Thank you, and we wish his family well. Do any commissioners have any items, additional items they'd like to present for consideration today? Hearing none, we need to talk about our next date, and we all need to work with Kristen like we normally do. The commission traditionally has met on the fourth Monday of each month, which for April would be the 26th. And Kristen will be polling everyone for the availability for our next meeting. Hearing no other issues for consideration today, I'd like to adjourn the meeting for today. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Yep.